So we begin now the 31st day of the preparation for the total consecration to Jesus through Mary, very, very close to the day of our consecration. We'll have two more days of preparation and then the consecration itself on Wednesday. This is the apparition that occurred in August. The news of all that was going on at Fatima gradually spread to the other towns and villages of Portugal. And on August the 13th, the crowds at the Cova de Iria had grown to almost 20,000 people, all eagerly awaiting the arrival of Our Lady, but the three Fatima children were not there. The administrator of the local district and a prominent Freemason had captured the shepherd children and taken them to Villanova. They were imprisoned in the district jail and were offered the most valued gifts if they would reveal the secret of the messages of the Virgin Mary. The young visionaries responded, we will not say it even if the whole world was given to us. While they were being held, Our Lady still came to the Kova and revealed her presence to the large crowd. One faithful woman described the scene. There was a clap of thunder similar to that of the preceding time. It was hard to tell from which direction it came. Some thought from the home oak, but it seemed to me that it came from very far away. Everyone was still and quiet. We were frightened. Then came the lightning. And at once we noticed a beautiful small cloud. I felt drawn to it, white in color, very bright, which hovered some moments over the home oak, then rose towards the sky and disappeared in the atmosphere. While looking around us, we noticed a strange thing, which we had also seen the previous time. The faces of the people had all the colors of the rainbow, pink, red, blue, as did the clothes they were wearing and the ground upon which they stood. The trees did not appear to have branches and leaves, but instead everything was laden with flowers. Back at the prison, the administrator used many means, including the threat of boiling the children in oil, to pry from them either the secret itself or a confession that they were lying. Courageously, the children refused to betray their confidence and remained steadfast under every tactic used. Jacinta said that she would rather die than reveal anything she had been asked not to. The three children prayed the rosary with the prisoners before a medal Jacinta hung on the wall. Believing that they were soon to be killed, they were full of joy and excitement at the thought of being in heaven with their Blessed Mother and our Lord. Realizing that he was getting nowhere, the administrator released the children after two days, on August the 15th, the Feast of the Assumption of Our Lady. On the afternoon of the 19th, Lucia and her cousin Francisco, accompanied by Francisco's older brother John, went to put their sheep to pasture. As they were doing so, Lucia felt that something supernatural was enveloping them and suspected that Our Lady was going to appear. Feeling sorry that Jacinta would not be there to see her, she asked John to go and get her. John, displeased in being sent away, said that he too wished to see Our Lady. However, with the persuasion of a coin and the promise of another upon his return, he agreed to fetch Jacinta. While he ran to get her, Lucia and Francisco saw the characteristic flash of light, and just as Jacinta arrived, Our Lady appeared above a home oak tree. Lucia again asked Our Lady, What do you want of me? And I'm going to pause here a moment. If you ever go to Fatima, certainly uh, take the time to go to this different site where that apparition of August took place. It's in a beautiful location uh, out a little bit more in the woods or surrounded by trees. It's a beautiful place for prayer.
So Lucia asked Our Lady, What do you want of me? I want you to continue going to the Kovera Iria on the 13th, and that you continue praying the Rosary every day. On the last month, I will perform a miracle so that all may believe. If they had not taken you to the town, the miracle would have been greater. St. Joseph will come with the child Jesus to give peace to the world. Our Lord will come to bless the people. Our Lady of the Rosary and Our Lady of Sorrows will come also. What do you want them to do with the money the people leave at the Cova de Iria? Have two litters made. You will carry one with Jacinta and two other girls dressed in white. The other one Francisco is to carry with three boys like him dressed in white. It will be for the feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. What is left over will help towards the construction of a chapel that is to be built. Lucia then said, I should like to ask you to cure some sick persons. Our Lady said, yes, I will cure some of them during the year. Then, looking sad, Our Lady said, pray, pray very much and make sacrifices for sinners. For many souls go to hell because they have no one to make sacrifices and pray for them. And as before, Our Lady ascended towards the east and disappeared. What is, what is it that our Lord wants us to learn from this message? I want to highlight two points, especially one. So the, before I get to the main one, the first one I'll say is Our Lady uh, responding or speaking to the children, she says, pray, pray very much and make sacrifices for sinners. For many souls go to hell because they have no one to make sacrifices and pray for them. Let those words sink in for us who want to be Our Lady's children. For many souls go to hell because they have no one to make sacrifices and pray for them. It would be, it might seem like a more comfortable or happier life if we didn't pay attention to that and just sort of went about our business, not so concerned. Uh, but that echoes very much our Lord's word in the gospel as well about the broad way to hell, uh, which many souls trod. Our Lady says, many souls go to hell because they have no one to make sacrifices and pray for them. And so if we love Our Lady, if we love souls, then we should be willing to take extra steps in terms of prayer and making sacrifices for them. And then, God willing, one day we'll have the incredible joy in heaven. Can you imagine of meeting the souls that you helped through your prayers during this rosary right now? Or in other ways, the souls that you helped to reach heaven. And that reminds me, I forgot to mention the intentions from this morning. Please pray for someone in South Africa who wanted to remain anonymous, but someone in South Africa who prays the rosary with us who would like to now find a parish to become a Catholic. So not a Catholic yet, but let's pray for this person that they do become a Catholic in uh, this person in South Africa. So that's point number one is to many souls go to hell because they have no one to make sacrifices and pray for them. And so as Our Lady says, pray, pray very much and make sacrifices for sinners. The second point and the main point is when Our Lady says, if they had not taken you to town, so if the administrator had not captured the children and taken them to town, the miracle would have been greater. This miracle, which is a great miracle, as, as you'll see in, in October, that miracle would have been even greater. And I think the lesson Our Lady wants us to learn is how much our actions have a great uh, ripple effect for good or evil on uh, on even on what God does. We tend to think that, okay, if God's doing something, that's just Him, and we should pray, or so forth, but it doesn't really make that much of a difference what I do. But that's not the case. The truth is that God has chosen to be very sensitive, if you will, to what we do or don't do, which has great ripple effects also in His action in our world. And so as Our Lady's children 
to realize that all of our actions throughout the day, the Sacred Heart of our Lord and the Immaculate Heart of Mary are infinitely attentive and you could say sensitive to what we do or don't do. And so to realize the great value and to be willing to take initiatives, to, to be on our toes, if you will, and rejoice in the fact that we, this, we have that privilege of having the King of Kings being that attentive to what we do or don't do and Our Lady as well. And so let us close with praying the Memorare, asking Our Lady to prepare us for this day of consecration, which is now very close. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought that intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, our mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer us. Amen.